just joining us, welcome. We will get started in just a moment. Well, good evening, Bernard Zell, and welcome to the 2021 State of the School. Tonight will be filled with highlights, memories, inspiration, and a look at the strategic direction of our community. In order to celebrate our community and its accomplishments, we hope to make tonight as interactive as possible within our digital format. I encourage you to please share in the chat over the next few minutes your stories and highlights from the past year, memories you want to hold on to, experiences you're proud to share, and of course, a few good laughs if you have those. Tonight's program will include some pre-recorded messages from the chairperson of the Board of Trustees and our treasurer, a fun video allowing us to glimpse at the student experience, an interactive student teacher panel presentation, and of course, if we have the time, some questions and answers. Thank you to those who submitted your questions in advance. We will also have the opportunity to answer questions we might not get to tonight, tomorrow at our morning brew. You'll be hearing from me again later in the program, but first I am honored to welcome Debbie Cooper, Chairperson of the Board of Trustees for her opening remarks. Good evening. It's such a pleasure to be with you tonight. For those of you for whom I haven't had the chance to meet in person, my name is Debbie Cooper and I am Chair of the Bernard Zell Board of Trustees. I'm honored to welcome you tonight to the 2021 State of School. Our goal is for you to walk away with a clear understanding of where our school stands today. As I sat down to work on my remarks for tonight, I looked at what I had written for last year. We met last year on February 6th. Many of you joined Gary and me in the band and music rooms of our new facility. We celebrated the incredible way that our community came together to raise more than $19 million, more than twice of what we had ever raised previously to build our state-of-the-art new facility. What none of us knew at the time was how in just six weeks, our lives were about to change in fundamental and previously unimaginable ways due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And yet we are still here and not only surviving, but thriving as a school community. While raising $19 million and building a new building is certainly an incredible accomplishment, I want to suggest that the way our school and community has responded to the current crisis, prioritizing the health and safety of our community and the educational and social emotional needs of our students and faculty, that may be our greatest accomplishment yet. Let's reflect for a moment on what we've achieved together over the past year. 70 days of in-person schooling, two and a quarter million dollars raised, including exceeding our annual campaign goal and emergency, uses, emergency use funds for expanded tuition assistance and health and safety protocols. 400 meals donated to the Knight Ministry and other organizations for people experiencing food insecurity. <laughs> Record high parent satisfaction scores and so much more. What we have been able to accomplish, accomplish this year has been the result of the hard work and incredible dedication of so many. Thank you to Gary, Audris, our leadership team and outstanding faculty, the teams of advancement, IT, administration, 
our security personnel, Chef Ben and the kitchen staff, the cleaning and maintenance staff, our PTC, our generous donors, my fellow trustees, and the parent community. Let's not forget our children, BZ students ages three to 14, who have displayed resilience and optimism in beautiful ways during a really challenging time. As a Jewish people, we are not strangers to adversity and challenges. Time and time again, we have responded in ways that reflect creativity and resourcefulness. One of the most striking examples is after the second temple was destroyed by the Romans. In the absence of a place for animal, animal sacrifices and other ways of worship, Jews reinvented our ways of practice. Rabbinic Judaism was born, focused on prayer, oral law, and traditions. We pivoted. We became a home, family, and communally-based people, finding a way to survive for thousands of years. Our ability to thrive this year, in my mind, is due in part because of our role as a Jewish day school. Building on our thousands of years of history, of resilience, resourcefulness, community, and practice of Sraka. Recently, I've been thinking about what all this means for our students. More than the gift of in-person schooling, for which I'm incredibly grateful, we provided a real-time, immersive, experiential education by modeling problem-solving, bravery, flexibility, and connectedness as a way to respond to a situation that challenged us all. This is something that our students will remember, internalize, and take with them. That gift is invaluable, emblematic of exactly who we are as a school community, and one that fills me with pride and gratitude. As we look to the future, I want to share a few of the things the board continues to be focused on this year. Partnering with Gary as we develop a vision and plans for Bernard Zell moving forward, some of which he will share with you tonight. Continuing to reimagine Jewish studies at Bernard Zell, highlighting the integration of Jewish wisdom, ritual, and values into other disciplines, and articulating our distinctive value proposition, enabling us to solidify our position in the marketplace and continue to attract the prospective families who are interested in a superb education grounded in Jewish wisdom and values. On the screen are the names of the 2021 Board of Trustees. They care passionately about the strength and vitality of the school, both for their own families and future children. Trustees, I thank you for your service. I'd also like to give special recognition tonight to the PTC, so capably led by Alana Tenenbaum. Your partnership this year in this most unusual year to support our community is incredible. Thank you. It has been a privilege to lead this school community over the last three years during both these exciting and challenging times. Thank you for your partnership. The state of the school? The state of the school is Illinois. Illinois? Illinois. 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 I'm happy to be back at school because um not everyone gets the chance. I'm learning about tigers and tigers and I hate the animals. Pretty good. I mean we haven't had anything that's really stopped us from coming to school. Everyone's been pretty safe. Um, even at recess. We're so glad to be back and in eighth grade. It's been super great. Um, one of my favorite things we've done is we did a rocket launch at the beginning of the year. That was really great in science. Being at school cheers me up! One of my favorite things we've done this year is the Holocaust Project. I just think it's really special and interesting. Having so much fun at school! <laughs> I'm so happy
love is what I got. 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 Members of the Board of Trustees, esteemed faculty and administration, parents, families and friends, alumni, and of course, the most honorable Eddie the Eagle, who we're excited to have join us tonight. Last year at this time, we gathered together in person on a cold and snowy evening that coincided, more or less, with the one-year anniversary of my official event here at Bernard Zell. At the time, I reflected on how much had occurred in just one year. Little did I know what was in store in the year to come and how tame my first full year would seem in comparison. Tonight, I hope to accomplish three main objectives. First, I'd like to reflect on where we've been together since last year's meeting. Second, I want to share with you what you, our parents community, have told us about how the past 12 months have gone. And finally, I'd like to identify some challenges and opportunities that lie ahead and how we, as a community, will move forward from strength to strength. I've long believed that adversity doesn't build character. Instead, it reveals it. True character is shown in how we respond to pressure. Having spent most of my life in schools, I cannot think of a time when institutions such as ours were under greater pressure than during this pandemic. And I cannot think of an instance when an institution responded better or more completely to a difficult situation. We were one of the first schools directly impacted by COVID-19 way back in March. And we were able to quickly make the transition to online learning effectively reinventing our educational model overnight. The outpouring of support, cooperation, and flexibility from our faculty was truly spectacular. And while there were a few minor bumps on the road, we managed to provide an excellent educational experience while keeping everyone safe, united, and above all, part of a united community. The work before us wasn't just about providing academics. It was also about maintaining the ties that bind and the traditions that define who we are. Programs like our weekly Friday evening Shabbat gatherings sometimes drew crowds of 200 or more families. And we were able to offer many of our capstone end of year activities such as graduation, even as we began planning for the fall term. Following a summer of intensive planning, training and investments in the necessary resources and infrastructure, we were able to open in person and stay that way through the present day. Thanks to the heroic work of our teachers, lay leaders and administrative staff, We've been able to provide as close to the traditional BZ experience as we could have possibly imagined. If this past year was a crossroads, I'm proud to say we haven't just muddled through. Our school has thrived, and now the state of our school is stronger than it has ever been. It's apparent that our families agree with this assessment. Just a couple of months ago, we conducted a parent survey that revealed strong growth in nearly all of our key performance indicators. Indeed, despite the situation, or perhaps because of it, a remarkable 90% of our families gave the school top marks for the overall quality of the Bernard Zell experience. Just as impressively, 89% gave the school top marks in quality of education. Again, the highest we've ever scored. Other key findings showed that 87% of families believe their children are as safe as they possibly can be, with 76% believing that the social and emotional health has been well supported during the crisis. Nearly 93% are satisfied with the school's communications with families, and 78% are satisfied with communications from teachers. Again, both all-time highs. 63% of parents believe Bernard Zell delivers the perfect amount of Jewish engagement, up 17% from last year. Parents are very satisfied with our Jewish studies program at a cultural level, albeit with lower levels of satisfaction regarding Hebrew, use of Jewish texts, and developing a relationship with Israel. More on that in just a moment. I'm also proud to report that this past year, an astonishing 93% of our students were accepted at their first choice of high school, with 100% accepted at one of their top three choices. This year, in advance of their applications, our students' mean scores in math and reading were at or above the 95th percentile. We pride ourselves not only on these results, but on providing an outstanding holistic educational experience, combining a top academic program with Menschlichkeit and Yiddishkeit. Still, my pride in the efforts of this faculty and staff and the resiliency and commitment of our students and families 
families goes way beyond numbers. If the state of our school is strong, it's because of the people inside of that school and how they treat each child as a unique individual, B'Tselem Elohim. Elohim. This is a school that puts relationships at the forefront of everything we do. It is a deeply human and profoundly humane place. One that believes in the inherent value of helping each child become the best version of themselves and in the incredible power of exploring the modern world through a Jewish lens. In our best moments, this school serves as a sanctuary for learning, as the moral center of our community, and as a model for the way progressive Jewish education can and should work in the United States. And it's successful almost entirely due to the work that's done here each day by the finest teachers I've come across in nearly three decades of education. I hope you'll join me now in thanking them and in applauding their efforts, commitment, and energy. Our vision has always been to teach them diligently. And so in spite of the tremendous obstacles involved in simply maintaining instructional excellence and a sense of normalcy for our kids, this year has so far seen incredible innovation as well as a dedication to refinement and professional development. All of this is bracketed by a tremendous ongoing investment in the health, safety, and well-being of our teachers and a renewed commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion as an area of focus for learning and community engagement. Refinement and innovation means maximizing our single greatest advantage over most of the other schools in our area, our Jewish lens. Indeed, we believe one of the reasons our academic program is so good is precisely because we are a Jewish day school. It's our greatest tool, the way we develop children into A plus people and A plus students. Our Jewish studies teachers have, led by our new director of Jewish studies, Rachel Jury, have recently begun a deep dive into the curriculum with the goal of structuring K-8 learning around five domains, what students should know, do, believe, think, and be, all while providing the incredibly warm Hamish Jewish holiday and cultural programs we're known for under the creative eyes of Director of Jewish Life and Learning, Chagit Lewis. In middle school, we've seen an incredible push towards innovation at each grade level. As teaching teams developed exciting new learning opportunities to meet their students' specific developmental needs and interests. Our fifth graders recently wrapped up their Life Over Time unit in which they created and programmed robotic Paleozoic ocean animals that made up an entire virtual food web. Our sixth graders looked at Jewish identity and anti-Semitism through a range of historical and literary sources. Our seventh graders created their first ever original feature film. And our eighth graders continued to investigate the overarching theme of power in a just society, how it can be used and abused all while working with our artists and residents to learn and tell the story of survivors of the Shoah with interviews that will be displayed via QR code alongside original student photographs in an outward facing museum for the general community later this spring. In lower school social studies, we've put special focus on learning about community and about people who are different than ourselves. Grades one and two are piloting the AmazeWorks programs, which focuses on anti-bias education, including empathy, belonging, and resiliency. In grades three and four, a few classes are piloting the Nora project and poetry pals. In math, a great deal of attention is being given to professional development, specifically on incorporating supplements to our existing investigations curriculum, which challenges students to think more deeply about content. Heavy focus has been given to developing accessible, low floor and high ceiling mathematical tasks, mathematical conversation, flexible thinking and numeracy, and pushing kids to use what they do know in order to solve what they don't yet understand. In literacy, students continue to focus on persuasive writing and on building their fiction and nonfiction toolboxes to grow into competent, confident readers using the Lucy Calkins and Wilson programs as the foundation for their work. In early childhood, one area of focus has been on mindfulness, continuing last year's rollout of the Calm Classroom program. Research shows that the more we practice wellness techniques in a safe and structured environment, the stronger our brain's wiring becomes for caring, composure, and calm. Our EC faculty has witnessed firsthand how much our students have benefited from consistently practicing these techniques and have noted decreased behavioral issues and improved skill acquisition as our students are better able to use these calming techniques, both with guidance from their teachers uh, and no. on their own. All of this begs the question, now what? Where do we go from here? What is the work that is to be done next? As proud as we are of what we've accomplished, we do face challenges, ranging from the continuing progression and development of our curriculum and communal programming to balancing sustainability and affordability 
responding to a rapidly changing independent school marketplace. Because of COVID, it's hard to know the exact pace at which many of our strategic priorities will be enacted. And of course, we're limited by time tonight, but among our areas of focus include developing affinity-based programs at the middle school level, not just to attract new students, but to give existing students the opportunity to explore areas of intense passion. One such pathway we are closely examining is in design, technology, and innovation, which could see students able to spend a portion of their day in our innovation lab, learning by investigating, inventing, and prototyping new solutions to difficult real-world problems. Organically integrating Jewish studies in general studies areas. In this approach, Jewish learning isn't relegated to just one or two class periods a day. We imagine and are working towards a structure in which a biology class also studies Jewish biological ethics. A social studies class investigates contemporary issues through Jewish texts and art classes in which students study the visual richness of our diverse Jewish experience. Even if students work towards fluency, emphasizing conversational Hebrew as a world language. Widening our base of students by offering busing programs to growing areas of Jewish Chicago in order to provide opportunities for a BZ education to a broader, more diverse group of families, including a refined ent entry point at the beginning of middle school. And providing summer opportunities for students, including sports camps, theater and science camps, and potentially a summer program for EC families looking for year round programming. The list goes on, but the message is clear. Bernard Zell is fortunate to be in an excellent position and in ways few Jewish day schools or independent schools more generally ever experience. And while there are, as always, challenges, the state of our school is stronger than ever, not just in measurable quantifiable ways, but in terms of positioning ourselves as the model for way, the way Jewish education can and should work. I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to thank three other groups of people whose efforts have made it possible for us to be where we are. First, I wanna thank our dream team of administrators. There are too many to recognize everyone by name, but I hope you'll indulge me as I call out a few right now, beginning with our division heads, Abby Aloni, Karen Levitt, Stephanie Bloom, and Lauren Almofty, whose stellar leadership and support have allowed our three divisions and our student services program to thrive. Second, I wanna thank everyone at Barhouse, specifically our COFO, Audra Swong, and her team, including Director of Operations, Colleen Coyle, whose epic competence, patience, and counsel has kept everyone safe, secure, and confident throughout an incredibly difficult time, while also matter-of-factly handling the finance and operation of the school with incredible grace and efficiency. I hope you and your team feel our ongoing gratitude in everything we do. You really are the best. Finally, I want to thank our Board of Trustees for their ongoing support and leadership. I am proud to work with such a passionate, dedicated, and wise group of lay leaders. In particular, I want to take this moment to publicly thank our Board of Trustees Chairperson, Debbie Cooper. Debbie, I'm pretty sure you had no idea that you were signing on for what was essentially a full-time job, but your partnership, leadership, and friendship over these past years have been essential to our success. I count myself so fortunate to work with you. And I know I speak for our entire community in thanking you for everything you've done and continue to do for our children and for the school. And thank you everyone on this call for listening. I hope what I've shared tonight has reminded you just how special this school is and how fortunate we are to have our children able to learn and grow here. This last year has presented us with what has at times felt to be insurmountable challenges, a global health pandemic, a long due overdue reckoning with racial equality, political turmoil and extremism. But as Debbie mentioned earlier this evening, the Jewish people are no strangers to adversity and challenge. When confronted with obstacles, we have risen above them, showing creativity and resourcefulness. And our people's broader history is reflected in the history of this institution, a school that has consistently overcome hardships, but with each test, our true character and foundational goals are again and again revealed. At this moment, I think it's important that we not forget our past, especially as we look ahead to next year's landmark 75th anniversary, our diamond anniversary. We are beginning to emerge from a challenging time and there's a lot of hope and so much to celebrate in the weeks and months ahead. Who we are is forged by those who came before us. And as an institution, it's our responsibility to teach our children about where they've been, where they, what they've learned and how together we can find solutions to some of our most intractable problems. The state of our school is very strong. But if the, the, but the students it educates will be even stronger, 
more steadfast, and deeply compassionate because of their experiences here. Thank you for joining us on this journey. And thank you once again for entrusting us with your kids. Go Eagles. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Adam DeWitt. I'm the treasurer of Bernard Zell, and I am a parent of three children at the school, two fourth graders and a sixth grader. I'm here to give you the financial report, but I wanted to start off by saying, I can't tell you how excited I am that I'm giving you this report from the school. Right? What an amazing year. You know, it's been, it's been a tough year, it's been a difficult year, but for the school, it, it really truly has been an amazing year. Uh, and it really carries through not just all the things that Debbie talked to you about and all the things that Gary talked to you about, but uh, you know, even from a financial perspective, uh, we are in good shape. And um, you know, it's a much different story than we had from last year when I was here talking about uh, big structural deficits that you know, we had to take uh, over the last couple of years, a couple uh, larger than average uh, tuition increases. We had a happy to report that uh, you know, this year we have a much more typical 4% tuition increase. And I'm gonna walk you through a little bit uh, about the finances of the school over the last year. So first I wanna rewind uh, to last year. And uh, last year, I think I, talk, uh, I told you the story where for a number of years, uh, we had run deficits and uh, we made the very difficult decision to do a, a number of things, including make a lot of expense cuts uh, at the school and also increase tuition um, by a, a larger than, than typical amount. Uh, and so for the first time uh, in a number of years, uh, we had put together a balanced uh, budget with that, higher, uh, with that higher level of tuition. Then uh, about two weeks later, uh, COVID happened. In fact, I remember the finance committee um, meeting that we had this morning that we had, uh, that we had to cancel uh, roughly a year ago today uh, because we had our first, uh, we had our first case of, of COVID in the community and we were trying to figure out what to do. Um, but that, of course, threw the budget out the window, right? What was going to happen? Uh, and uh, we obviously, the, the, I want to thank the administration for doing an unbelievable job of planning. Um, you know, at the outset, nobody knew what was going to happen, how much things were going to cost. Uh, we knew we were going to have to do remote learning. We didn't know how much that was going to cost. We knew we were going to have to uh, spend money on PPE, possibly more teachers, more technology. Um, and so, you know, we were kind of all over the board in terms of uh, trying to figure out uh, how to balance um, expenses and, uh, and revenue and, um, through, uh, you know, additional philanthropy. Uh, through a, a PPP loan from, uh, from the government, uh, through you know, extraordinary efforts by the administration to figure out, hey, you know, how, how, how to spend money appropriately. We knew we were gonna have to spend extra money, uh, but how to spend uh, money in, in the most efficient manner. Uh, and then also taking some uh, sacrifices as well. I think the, the administration took uh, zero salary increases uh, uh, for this year. So all in all, um, you know, we were able to get to a, a neutral budget for this year, uh, which really was, you know, a phenomenal outcome, especially given that, you know, we're one of the few schools uh, in the Chicago uh, community that has had kids in school, in-person learning for the entire year. So for 21-22, 4% tuition increase, uh, you know, which for us is a much more typical tuition increase. If you go over the past uh, 15 years, I think our average tuition increase is slightly above 4%. Um, you know, we are, uh, you know, we are likely going to run a slight, uh, a slight deficit for uh, the, the school year for 21-22. We haven't finalized the budget. Uh, we are okay with the, with the slight deficit given, um, you know, we expected to spend a little bit more uh, because of COVID costs, you know, leaking into the, into the coming year. Uh, and so we feel good about where we are. Uh, I think this slide does a good job of, of reminding folks that, uh, you know, the, the, the model is pretty simple. You know, we get most of our revenue from tuition and we spend most of our money on, on instructional, uh, instructional and student activities, whether it's teachers, um, benefits or, uh, you know, supplies and materials. Finally, um, it, you know, as I said, I, I think this is a really uh, good story overall from a financial perspective. Um, you know, we're making investments uh, in, in the quality of education. And, um, you know, it's really heartening to me is, you know, we've been able to stay open, which, you know, in and of itself, I think 
would have been a huge win for uh, for 2021 and 21-22. Um, but at the same time, we're making uh, we're making additional investments over the next year, um, which I'm really excited about. You know, one is I you know we're taking a really uh, close look at. Um, at, at, our, at our teachers and making sure that we are putting together competitive uh, pay and professional development pathways for our teachers because you know having the best teachers means you have the best education. Um, I think you've heard Gary and, and Debbie both mention diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, you know we are we are spending more on on uh, folks to help us with that, but then also programming. Um, uh, you know to help us as well. Uh, we are going to be filling two significant positions uh, at in the leadership level, a director of Jewish studies and the associate head of school. Um, and we're also doing a bunch of uh, programming and facilities enhancements over the next year. So uh, I'm really excited as a parent. I'm really excited as as the treasurer. Um, you know, despite a, a you know a very challenging year from a uh, you know from a pandemic perspective, from a school perspective, I think we have a lot to be proud of. Uh, and a lot to be excited about uh, for the next year. Thank you. All right, thank you, Adam. Uh, I am now thrilled uh, to come to my favorite part of tonight's program, which is where I welcome a group of fantastic faculty and students uh, who will have an opportunity to speak to their experiences teaching and learning during this tremendously unusual year. And I'm, I'm hoping we can begin by having each of them introduce themselves. And uh, I think we will start with uh, our teachers. And it is my pleasure uh, to welcome uh, Andy Hurt and Rachel Silverberg. Andy and Rachel, maybe you want to just take one moment and introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about what you do here. Sure, I'll start. Hi, I'm Andy Hurt. Uh, uh, this is my 27th year teaching at Bernard Zell. All of them have been in senior kindergarten. I just can't seem to graduate, but uh, I've had a <laughs> phenomenal run. I've been or I am the proud parent of three Bernard Zell graduates, all of whom uh, would uh, absolutely attest to the fact that this was their foundational educational experience. And uh, I'm just excited that uh, not only am I here tonight, but that we're here in person uh, in the midst of this pandemic. Thanks, Andy. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Rachel Silverberg. I am a fourth grade teacher here. This is my third year at school. And I actually grew up in Michigan and went to um, Hillel Day School in Michigan. So yeah, we have lots of, lots of Michigan families and Hillel families. And it's really um, been a pleasure to be part of a community that's similar, but in a new city. Um, so I'm very grateful to be part of this community and to be with you all tonight. Thanks, Rachel. And now our two students, Ian Schwartz and Alexa Nassiter. Um, hi, I'm Ian Schwartz. I'm a seventh grader at this school. Um, I've been going here since JK. And, awesome. uh, a few things out and Ian, I know, I know there's a lot of things you're really into. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Some of the things I like to do are um, hang out with my friends and play hockey. Awesome, wonderful. And Alexa, how about you? Hi, I'm Alexa Nassiter. Um, I'm a sixth grader and um, I'm so glad to be here today. Um, I really like to dance and act and like, like Ian said, hang out with my friends and you know, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we're thrilled to have all of you here. I actually want to start with our teachers because uh, this has been such an unusual year uh, for all of us. And I'm, I'm curious to hear from you, what has this year been like for you? And what has it meant to, for you to be in person at school every day? Uh, I think for me, the sort of the most succinct way I can express it is that in, in many ways, while it's an unusual year, it's been a really normal sort of year. And the experiences that we've been able to create and 
and have have really replicated much, if not all that we've been able to do in, in years past. So I really think that for me that yes, there has been obviously hurdles to overcome and there have been lots of times where I've needed to take a deep breath, um, but I think we've all sort of embraced the chaos for the most part and really flourished uh, amidst it and have really uh, enjoyed the opportunity to sort of think on our feet and innovate at times and be able to um, just be together in person. Uh, I, there's no doubt that teaching kindergarten over Zoom is maybe one step harder than hurting cats. So I've been you know, so fortunate and lucky to feel like every day I can wake up and know that we're gonna be together, albeit masked and maybe somewhat socially distanced or uh, alone in our room for much of the day, but nevertheless, all of that still has allowed us to do all the things that we really value and uh, want to accomplish with our uh, kindergarten students. Rachel, how about you? Uh yeah, building off that, I think the for me, the, the number one thing that has been so special about being back in school is that it's so much easier to build relationships and kind of build those laughs and inside jokes that all the kids in the class can be a part of. And we get that community piece back that was a little bit more difficult to build over Zoom. Um, the other thing is, it's rare to find a group of kids who are so excited to come to school. And I think at Bernard's L in general, you get more of that, but this year, because of everything that happened last year, kids are so excited to come to school every day. It's not to say that they don't look forward to a weekend or a break or anything, but um, in general, they're so happy to be there and, and they're so verbal about it. So it's really fun to teach to a room full of people who all want to be there and to take in everything that you're doing every day. It's, it's really joyful and puts everything in perspective. Uh, Rachel and Andy, I'm curious, as you look to the future and, and, and that time, hopefully in the not so distant future, where we're able to put the pandemic behind us, are there things that you would like to keep from this year moving forward? Uh, other than a whole lot of masks, um, I think prime, the, the biggest thing for me would probably be the, the notion that even someone like me who's been doing this for a really long time, uh, the ability to innovate and to do it in with my colleagues and think on our feet and really um, in the moment find and think about what's best for our kids. Uh, I think for me, that's really what I will take away is that at, at times everything feels very, you know, in normal circumstances as if there's a process and a plan and we go through these different iterations and we want to test and, and sort of really think about and evaluate but in the midst of the pandemic, we didn't really have the opportunity to do that. And I think we really, I, I really value that experience and that notion that, you know what, it, it, it's possible to create an amazing educational experience, even when you can't do all of those things that are, are part of a, a normal process. So for me, I, I know take, moving forward, knowing that that can happen, you know, even in the worst of circumstances, I know we can apply to the best of circumstances as well. Awesome. I think, and Rachel, I know you probably have a number of things besides the clear plastic uh, shields that we wear during lunch. Yes, I think um, there are a couple of main qualities that I have seen the kids develop this year that I want to make sure we continue to develop in years to come. And one of those huge things is I think they gained a ton of independence from this past year. And it's been amazing to have fourth graders come in who have gained so much independence and are so willing to take ownership over their own learning and ownership over their actions and um, kind of are eager to further their own learning. And it's almost like there's no question that you can really answer, I don't know anymore because they're so able to use their computer and look up resources and find references and talk about reliable sources. So it's been very cool to see them be able to explore their passions um, and dive deeper into topics that they really care about. And I think as a whole faculty, we've been really good about opening up that door to kids so that they've been able to do that. Um, and then I think the other big thing that I wanna make sure we keep is flexibility, both on the teacher's parts and the kids' parts, because from all their different class experiences last year, 
they're coming in and I'll give an assignment and say, okay, we're going to each make one slide and together we're going to build this slideshow. And they'll be like, well, can we make it into an iMovie? It's like, uh, yeah, I didn't even think of that. And I don't know how to use that, please. So um, just me being able to be flexible when, when tech fails or if they want to like change the assignment to make it better, um, like, yeah, let's, let's all be flexible. And the same for them, they've become much more flexible. So I definitely want to make sure that that's a skill that we continue to foster. And it allows them to have a lot more agency over their learning. Um, let me ask you one more question before we turn to the kids. And it's, it's really a follow-up to that for both of you. Uh, one of the things that has just amazed me is the resiliency our kids have. Um, talk about how you've seen that play out, maybe some specific examples. And how our kids were able to navigate this new normal that was really unimaginable just a few months ago. Uh, I mean, I, again, in, in kindergarten, one advantage is that maybe there wasn't an old normal. So uh, establishing a new normal was relatively easy. But that being said, uh, there's no doubt that resiliency has always been a quality that we've emphasized and tried to create opportunities to develop in kindergarten. And I think we've seen it um, sort of blossom this year as, as the kids have moved into kindergarten and expected to be able to eat in the lunchroom with the older kids or travel to school and go to the different floors and be in the music room or other places that they didn't get to experience when they were in nursery or JK. And then coming in and starting this year and knowing that those things weren't going to happen, um, while there was disappointment, there was also sort of this uh, optimistic sense of, well, we get to be a family in our room and experience things like a family. So that means, you know, it's almost like a, a vacation away. And yes, we don't have all of the things that we normally have at home, but we do have this opportunity to sort of really be together in an intimate and sort of uh, 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 really a, a way that it, it's not sort of typical of uh, a class of kindergartners, uh, at least at our school. So I think absolutely seeing the kids sort of embrace that and be excited about it and not at all disappointed about any of the things that maybe their older siblings got to experience in kindergarten, to me, I think is the, the biggest sort of uh, idea of resiliency that I've seen in, in SK. That's awesome. Rachel, how about you? Um, I think that independence piece played a big role in their resiliency as well. So I feel like this year I'm seeing a lot more of kids um, asking for the things that they need, whether that's a break from sitting and looking at a screen or at a lesson too long, or just needing a break from their mask or needing a snack at a different time of day. They're, um, they're very independent in asking for what they need and very appropriately taking the steps to gain that. Um, they've also gotten really resourceful. So if they can't find something, um, they're not so dependent on saying, I can't find this. They go and if they can't find their notebook, they'll get a piece of paper and find, find an alternative. So I've seen um, a huge influx in these executive functioning skills, which has been um, really amazing. And then just one example, I have one student who every week, back to exploring passion, she likes to write something called the 304 times and like share what we've done for the week. And on days that she's not able to be in class or um, is on Zoom, she's like, okay, she'll write it and email it and say, can you please print this for the class to have? So they just have found ways to maintain what they're used to, but just maybe it looks a little different than it once did. So that's a wonderful transition over to our, our students. Ian and, and Alexa, we're, we're so happy you're able to join us tonight. And thank you for, uh, for, for taking your evening with us. I'm, I'm wondering if for you as students, this has been such an unusual experience. So many of the projects and programs that we do over the course of your experience here are things that you look forward to over, over the years before. Can you think of a specific program or project that continued this year despite the circumstances and you looked and said, boy, this was really terrific? Uh, to answer this yeah. question, I think that um, one project that has carried over from the previous years is our memoir unit in reading, writing, workshop, reading, writing workshop. Um, I really like this. I really have liked this unit this year and in the past because I really think it gives me the opportunity to to think as a writer and think in my own brain as opposed to say reading a book and then writing about it from the writer's perspective. 
I just write it from my own perspective. Did it for 100% of the surgery? And I think that, I think that um, it really helps me get my ideas out to my teacher so I can. Sorry, Ian, we're having, we're having a, a little bit of, oh, there we go, much better, I'm sorry. We caught, um, we caught most of that. Oh, uh, should I just re-say it? Yeah, well, I mean, this is something you're, you, that you're obviously really passionate about, uh, reading and writing, and, and, yeah. and I think that's fantastic. So, uh, Alexa, let's, let's turn to you. Are, are there programs that you look at and say, boy, you know, this is, this is something that has really been great despite all the circumstances? Yeah, for sure. So this year and in the previous years, we've done this project called the Hanukkah Heroes Project. And normally this is just in Jewish studies, but this year our teachers decided to um, like make it in three different subjects. So we did this one project in Jewish studies in Hebrew, history and performing arts, which I thought was amazing. So basically the project was we all um, got assigned, we had each advisory. So that's about like six or seven kids. And we all got assigned one um, Hanukkah hero and that's basically a person who really has led the Jewish community and just a really hero, like a hero for people. So our advisory was Golda Meir. If you don't know, she's the first woman prime minister of Israel. And basically we all had to research our person in history class. And that really helped us build the skills of researching and being, being able to find good sources as well in um, Hebrew and Jewish studies, we were able to really look at their past and incorporate some like Jewish studies in Hebrew into our songs. And then in performing arts, we were able to create a script and make our own songs for um, the play. And then we rehearsed them in all three classes and it took a long time, but we were able to create an awesome play and then eventually share it with all the other advisories in sixth grade, which was a super fun experience. So yeah, I really like that. Can I just, before, before we even move to the next question, can I just point out how awesome the two of you are and how tremendously are articulate and thoughtful both of you are. You, 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 you just amaze me. Um, the, uh, <laughs> The, uh, the, the second question I really wanted to ask uh, both of you is, are, have there been times uh, over, uh, over the year that you've looked and said, boy, this is an experience that's different. It's actually been an improvement from the way we, we do school. And, and Alexa, why don't we start with you on this one? Okay, so yes, there's definitely a lot of things that um, we've had during COVID that I think have improved my experience at school. And one thing specifically would be um, now that we have two recesses. And I think I really love this because one, it allows us a time to just get a break from our learning and be able to just like move around and, you know, maybe play a game of football or talk to friends or do something so that you can kind of get that break. And I've also noticed that like having these two recesses allows me to be able to really focus in the next class that I have and allows me to get out all my energy and so I can really stay present and still and you know have a better experience so yeah for sure awesome Ian how about you I think one part of this year that has been new that I think I would like to keep is the fact that we did a seventh grade movie instead of a seventh grade play uh, I really think this is uh, a great thing to keep in the future because it, in it incorporates more students and more time and it, it really lets you learn how to use like the green screen and editing and all that kind of stuff. And so I think maybe you, if you really want to, you can use that in the future. So I think it's a good lesson to learn in seventh grade. It was a really awesome movie. And uh, I, I understand from my previous conversations with you, Ian, that, that you share Alexa's feelings about the double recess. We'll, 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 we'll call it a referendum on, uh, on two recesses I, I do, and, yeah. and say that's, that's a universal. Rachel and, uh, and Andy are nodding too, so <laughs> fantastic. Well, Alexa and, and Ian, thank you so much for joining us. Rachel and Andy, thank you for everything you do for, for our kids and our community. You're all awesome. We're, we're, we're thrilled you were able to join us tonight and thank you again. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.
And that brings us uh, to some questions and answers. We have uh, just a couple of minutes left, but I want to uh, make sure that we at least get to address a couple of these. We have a number of them that have come in. Uh, I also want to say uh, thank you for, for all the words of gratitude that are coming in on the chat. Uh, I will pass them on to our faculty and staff, and we are truly grateful and humbled. Um, one of the uh, the first question that came in is actually a pretty general one. Uh, thank you so much for all this information. What are you most excited about for the remainder of this year? Honestly, there's an awful lot that I'm excited about in terms of the programming that we have coming up for this year. But really what I'm most excited about is the planning we're doing now uh, administratively and as a faculty for, for next year and the years beyond. Uh, we're going to be bringing in a new assistant head of school for curriculum and instruction. And that's really going to help us ramp up the continued refinement of our academic and our co-curricular and our family programming, uh, allowing us to really imagine the sort of amazing programming we can offer our children, including some of the ones that I was uh, able to mention a little bit in our talk. Second question that came in, how did you arrive at the 4% increase and will that continue? Well, as Adam mentioned in his comments, uh, the 4% the increase is actually in line with our actual cost structure, as our actual costs, including uh, cost of living increases for our faculty, uh, step adjustments for our teachers, uh, healthcare costs, and of course, the increase in security costs all go up each year by three or 4% at a minimum. Um, this is, however, below our historic average and actually below market. It's a, uh, it's a comfortable and very reasonable target from our perspective for our year-to-year -year increases. Here is a multi-part question. Um, looking forward to hearing about academics. Could you discuss changes to STEM programming as well? I talked a little bit about that during my speech. So uh, let me move on to the second and third parts. Would BZ be able to share the 21-22 school calendar? Are there any changes to expect around breaks and the number of instructional days? So yes, actually the calendar will be out next week. Uh, we are not anticipating any major changes around the structure of the calendar. Uh, the number of instructional days, obviously, being a Jewish school, will sometimes vary because of the Jewish holidays and the like. Uh, but due to the instructional, the, the, when we look at the actual instructional hours that take place, it's actually considerable higher than almost any school and in a very good place. Some And the third question on that. Uh, some private schools offer tuition assistance, I'm sorry, tuition insurance through third party insurers. Is that something BZ could do to help families in cases of unforeseen emergencies and closures? Yeah, we actually uh, did look at this. For a school our size, unfortunately, it would require a 1.2% additional surcharge somewhere in that region uh, on tuition. And that seems to be a, a real challenge during a time when we're trying to be sensitive to tuition costs. If a child is home for school for a reason other than COVID, uh, but doesn't want to miss classes that day, is there a way that he or she can participate via Zoom? Well, there are some rare times that we're able to do that, uh, but the truth is it actually takes a significant amount of effort and preparation for our teachers to prepare for a child to meaningfully participate. Uh, when we're not planning in advance for these programs, uh, many in-class lessons are planned in ways that aren't necessarily conducive uh, to remote learning. And that's something that teachers take into consideration when they plan when a child is going to be absent, which is generally why we require 24 hours notice. Ah, what are some of the takeaways you have that can help propel us in the future? Well, I, I actually, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot and uh, talking about this with our administrative team and our, and, and our teachers. And I think Andy uh, really hit on one of the key points, which is the mandate to be flexible and innovative. Uh, schools are, are institutions that sometimes can be resistant to change, but as great as we are, it's often easy to forget that just because we've done something one way doesn't mean we have to do it that way always. Uh, I think the second thing I'll take away from this is the value of community and specifically how that plays a part not only in, in, in who we are and, and, and how, we, uh, how we relate to each other, but also how it relates to school. Um, I have always believed that uh, that rigor, relevance, and relationships are the key to a successful school. And it starts with the relationships that nat naturally brings the relevance, and that brings the rigor. Um, we are running low on time. I will remind everybody that 
Uh, tomorrow morning at our uh, morning brew, we will actually have the opportunity to answer some more of these questions as well. Uh, and in the meantime, I would like to take a moment to remind everybody about some events that we have coming up. Uh, not just Morning Brew, but our final diversity, equity, and inclusion events uh, with Siri Turk and Jason Kim Seda. Uh, the PTC Yad Biyad Crafts Kit Assembly, our PTC Community Meeting, our Winter Band Concert, our Equity Education Series, which is phenomenal, featuring Dr. Beryl Sat Satter, and uh, of course, on March 18th, our annual fundraiser, Thursday Night Live. So once again, thank you for your active partnership in your child's education. And thank you for taking the time to join us this evening as we've reflected on the, the challenges of the past and looked ahead to the incredible opportunities that lie before us. Thanks a lot and see you soon. This is the hope. This is the hope. To heal. This is the time. This is the time. We stand as one.